Uh, I am going to talk on topic we have all done coming to join the beautiful organized diabetes India 20. And as we have traveled, most of us do not have diabetes. Lots and lots of our patients have diabetes. Uh, one very common thing when this topic came to me, I, I was thinking what to write, but then I understood. Uh, so many things diabetic patient undergoes, they are so unchecked when the patient comes. We have a surgery and we have a pre anesthetic. But uh, we never think of a patient who is going abroad to some other country or going on a pilgrimage to some other place, uh, whether he actually manages his diabetes in a way. Yes, modern life has lots and lots of uh, travel diabetic patients. They, Excel in all the spheres. We have Kapil Dev playing cricket, and then we have a lot of people who are going exploring the world, all the corners. And a methodological approach for this uh, traveler is always helpful. Uh, what should be the strategy so that the strain on these, on our patients' diseases? There, there is a lot of impact of diabetes when a patient travels. There's a lot of anxiety when you're traveling. There's a lot of uh, Thought process is going on right from the booking of the tickets to the hotels to everything. And most of it, it is an alteration in climate, exercise, sleep pattern and, and alteration in diet. North person going to the south, the south going to the west, traveling from here to some other country, distant country. All the diet patterns, the hormonal changes, the counter-regulatory hormones, they all disrupt the glucose regulation. Extreme weather conditions, uh, they, they create a problem because of glucose me metabolism is changed and the circadian, the circadian rhythm is also changed and they are vulnerable to the local diseases which they are unaware about. We, we see in National Geography the lot of people who are traveling among the caves and they are also, also traveling around the rafting and we see a lot of our people going for rafting to other places. But they are unaware of the diseases which they are prone to catch during that time being a diabetic. Technology, yes. Travel, yes, they have actually helped continuous glucose monitors, insulin pens, smart pens, uh, flash glucose monitors. Now, we need a pre travel evaluation for our patients. Look to the immunization of those people who are actually traveling in order to give them a comfortable life. The education sessions must include carbohydrates counting and glucose monitoring, which is very, very important. We are in a state of indoor, and I think so. Are, my carbohydrate count has gone way beyond my expectation, what we have been doing for the past two days. Food exchanges in destination, exercise options, uh, safeguarding diabetic medication, test equipments, disposable of shops, test tips. Now, there are certain tips which, which a traveler needs to understand. Uh, carrying a self-glucose monitoring machine is very, very important. Medication, uh, carrying a medical identification card and uh, minding the food. Now. Usually, uh, a person comes to us, the doctor, we are, going to, we are going to our house and maybe for 15 days and we'll be back. Okay, fine, you're going for 15 days, you're carrying your stuff for 15 days. What if there's an emergency and you're not able to come back for the next five days? What happens? So it is always advisable that you take a few extra medicines with you, maybe about two weeks medicines with you. This happens with insulin. The insulin which we are using here and the insulin we are using abroad has got a different unit. The, the syringes have got different units. And this is a confusion which the, the patient undergoes. So these are the, this is the time when we need to retain and talk to them. Plus, a very nice habit. A person is going to a place where there is a lot of green grass. And there is a habit of most of our Indians that when they see green grass, they take off their shoes and they start walking on that grass because for one day. And yes, it is because a lot of insects can crawl. There are a lot of bites and ticks can come. They can Something can come and hit your... Uh, foot and ultimately you land up with diabetic foot. So you need to have a proper shoe while you are traveling. This is the checklist, relevant blood test to be done which is mandatory. Yes, I do advise my patients to get an HbA1c and HbA1c after the travel though it is a terminant for three months but it also gives a glycemic variability. Prescription has to be carried both in the luggage as well as in your mobile phones as well as in your DG app. And you should have an identification mark while you are traveling that you are a diabetic so that people know what is happening. Now, I am talking about a real life case, an Indian citizen, 22-year-old, type 1, traveling to South Asia. 
he has a he has an insulin pump with him and he utilizes certain syringes and bottles that he has to be carried and when he went to his ancestral home uh, he needed to get his shot but he ran out of insulin after after tripling his dose his sugars became uncontrollable and ultimately it found out that he was not using the right insulin and the right syringe so this is one very common thing which i said in my previous uh, uh, slide now warm climate warm climate conditions yes they are more prone to dehydration and because of dehydration the blood sugar level increases hypoglycemia prompts uh, the uh, osmotic diuretics worsens uh, dehydration and creates a vicious cycle now there are a lot of sglt2 people are using and they are in a warm climate and sglt2 continues to be being so we are more prone to land up the patient in diabetic ketoacidosis high risk and we need to educate our patient dehydration can cause a risk of renal failure and gastrointestinal illnesses and respiratory illnesses yes advise early morning exercise lightweight colored shoes lightweight colored uh, uh, clothing skin patches for cgm sensors they should be there you should have an insulin cooling pouch with you maintaining the device of 18 to 26 degrees and avoid direct sunlight for medications as well as for glucose monitor and and insulin and when we go to a cold climate a lot of people are now traveling to cold climates they are going to iceland they are going to switzerland during the winters they are going to mountains during the winters hb1c rises in and in a cold climate and low temperature can harm the continuous glucose monitoring machines and insulin pumps even the strips and being a protein insulin gets denatured in cold which our patients needs to understand and that is why uh, our patients are more prone to develop more and more complications so these are things which we have to take care of, as well as cardiac events are more in colder climatic conditions altitude yes lot of people are now going to the base camp of uh, everest they are, they are they are they are doing all those things which were not possible in the previous way somebody is going to Uh, kailash math and joshi math so there are errors in the glucose strips and uh, glucose monitors meters are exposed to the cold and do not function properly high altitude there is lot of pulmonary edema cerebral edema even causing retinal hemorrhages and mountain sickness so these are the things and people are put on steroids acetylazomide so this is to prevent this uh, high altitude dizziness and this adversely affects the blood glucose level we we are, i am i am staying in a city of uh, punjab in ludhiana and we get a lot of patients going to ladakh leh ladakh will be starting then going to srinagar will starting and there are a lot of diabetics people go to vaishno devi and they land up with lots and lots of complications i'll be discussing in my future slides now traveling on foot yes travel on foot needs to be prepared with healthy snacks to prevent hypoglycemia because you're traveling you're exercising and the blood sugar levels might come down any cardiovascular event may cause the risk Uh, while travel so there needs to be a proper reevaluation when a patient needs to go to all these type of hi uh, hiking now ulcers sores deformities neuropathy peripheral things shoes all these things have to be taken care of this is a small guide where how people can take care of their shoes now a real life case a person goes for a religious travel he travels on his he, he walks for about 8 miles because of the religiosity he talks he walks around 1200 steps and ultimately his blood sugar level rises rises and he lands up in the icu because of diabetic ketosis there are certain conditions which we have seen in our day to day practice yes driving by road patients with hypoglycemia if they are driving on road there are 18% chances of road traffic accidents so they need to keep their chauffeurs full with the snacks and other things yes traveling by by train there might not be coolants they might not be adequate uh, food materials in almost all the trains so these are certain things which we need to tell traveling by sea when the patient is traveling at a sea you might not have all the necessary equipments you might not have all the things that the food and other things are different a diabetic patient has to be told in air travel yes a thorough planning as i have discussed in previously risk of hypoglycemia i'll talk about one patient who was traveling from switzerland to new delhi he was on his insulin pump he took off his pump because of the clearance in the security check and he ultimately boarded the flight and he forgot the pump in the in the tray and ultimately he landed up with problems so fortunately there were some few people in the flight who helped him so these are certain real life cases and lot of people of us like to go to the wilderness and wilderness type 1 and type 2 diabetic patients they need to be extra careful when they are going to in a hilly area or they are, they are exposed to uh, warm climate or cold climate so these are other things and the wilderness society is also said now elderly population they have become like gray nomads this is a condition this is a, this is a type of people who have come up during the australia people australian continent where they usually like to enjoy life or post retirement so these are the people who are developed to 
uh, have uh, hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia when they are not taking proper care. So adequate, adequate food stuffs, adequate insulin, syringes, everything and their medications. This is what I will uh, say. Telemedicine has done a boon during the COVID-19 area and education, rural healthcare providers. So I'll say traveling is very safe with right planning, good luggage and your medicines, your prescriptions and with all guidelines. I think so we can have a wonderful uh, time given to our patients. Thank you, sir. Thank